Diffeomorphic is an independent add-on, which bridges DAS Studio with Blender, allowing you to import and use its character models. Although there's already an official DAS to Blender bridge, it is completely dwarfed by Diffeomorphic in the amount of features and direct support. So let's get to work installing it. First, we need to go to the Diffeomorphic website, which is linked in the description. The website itself is structured like a blog, with the author regularly posting updates about the add-on's development. Every new release of Diffeomorphic will have a version number next to its title. That indicates the Blender version, which it has been designed to use. Before you download Diffeomorphic, always make sure the correct Blender version is installed, as sometimes newer versions of Blender can cause incompatibilities with the newest version of Diffeomorphic. So I recommend you keep an older version of Blender available until the next stable release is launched. Now, to download Diffeomorphic, go up to the header and select DAS Importer. The header link will take you to an info page. There, click Stable Version. This will take you to a download page. If you want to access previous versions of Diffeomorphic, then select the Previous Releases link. Once it has downloaded, you will receive a compressed folder. Open it up. Go to the folder named 2 DAS Studio. In there, you will see a folder called Scripts. Open that, and you will see a folder called Diffeomorphic and a PNG file. Copy both of these. This script will allow DAS to export to Blender. To install this script, we need to first find the DAS 3D library directory. Open up a fresh DAS scene and click on the Content Library panel you will see a folder called DAS Studio Formats. Click on that, and it will drop down to reveal a folder called My DAS 3D Library. Right-click on that, and go to Browse Folder Location. That will bring up the Windows Explorer location of your DAS 3D Library, which will house all of your downloaded assets and resources. In there, you will see a folder called Scripts. Inside that, you will see a folder called Utilities. Paste the Diffeomorphic folder and the PNG file into the Scripts folder. Go back to DAS, right-click, and refresh the DAS 3D Library folder. The Diffeomorphic add-on will now appear in your Scripts folder. Now let's install the importer into Blender. Open up a fresh Blender scene. Go up to Edit and select Preferences. Go to Get Extensions, and then click on the down arrow button. Select Install from Disk. Go to the compressed Import DAS file we downloaded earlier, and press Install. Diffeomorphic will then appear in your Extensions tab. If you select Add-ons, you will also find that the DAS Importer is in there. That add-on will give you a list of optional features. When ticked, they will appear in the Diffeomorphic side menu. We won't be needing these for this tutorial, so we can leave them all unticked for less clutter. Now in your Blender scene, press N to bring up your add-ons side menu. You will see two tabs named DAS. Click on DAS Setup, and then go to Global Settings. In this menu, you'll need to connect Blender to your DAS 3D library. First, delete the default content directory's URLs, as they lead to nothing. Then, open up your DAS 3D library in the Windows Explorer and copy its URL. Paste that into the empty content directory, then press OK. Once you have done that, you'll have installed Diffeomorphic onto Blender. Now one last thing, if you're like me, and you have multiple DAS content libraries stored on different drives, then instead of manually adding each URL to Diffeomorphic's global settings, instead go to the Diffeomorphic script folder. In there, you will see a button called Save Paths. That will generate a file, which will contain the locations of all your DAS content libraries. In Blender, go to Load Root Paths, and then Find and Load that file. This will automatically paste the locations of all your DAS content libraries into your global settings, saving you a little bit of time. To uninstall Diffeomorphic and make way for a newer version, go to your Extensions tab, go to the DAS Importer, and select the drop-down arrow. Then click Uninstall. Go to your My DAS 3D Library and delete the Diffeomorphic script and its PNG file. Now that Diffeomorphic is fully installed, let me now show you how to use it. Let's start by importing a basic character model into Blender. First, open a fresh DAS scene, then load in a Genesis 8.1 male dev load from your smart content panel. Create a new folder on your desktop and call it Genesis 8.1 male, then save your DAS scene to that folder with the same name. 
Now go to the Scripts folder in your Content Library and open Diffeomorphic. If you want to add the Diffeomorphic exporter to Daz's file menu, select Setup Menus, then press OK to all the prompts. Now select Export to Blender. This will create a script which will allow Blender to import this model from our saved Daz scene. Make sure the script has the same name as your saved Daz scene, otherwise the import will fail. After saving, you'll get a prompt offering HD options. We don't need to touch this, so just press accept. Now in your Genesis 8.1 folder, you should have the DAS scene, the diffeomorphic script, and the automatic library thumbnails. Open up a fresh Blender scene, press N and go to DAS setup, then select Easy Import. Then navigate to your Genesis 8.1 folder. Before you import anything, take a look on the right. You will see a list of settings with tick boxes. These are very important, as they give you access to certain DAS features at the expense of increasing the import's file size. If you go up to Operator Presets, you will see that the author has left several preset options for us to use. Select Genesis 8.1 as that was the model we used. I would also recommend ticking body morphs if you're planning on importing custom poses. Depending on what options you've ticked, it will take some time for the character to load in. If you get an error message, then most likely you have missed a step in the installation process. Or you may have an outdated version of Blender or Diffeomorphic. Once it has loaded in, you'll have a fully rigged Daz character model in Blender. Now what's great about Diffeomorphic is that all of Daz's joint limitations and morph controls have been converted to be compatible with Blender. This means all of Daz's safeguards preventing you from making an unrealistic pose are still available in Blender. If you want to edit a limitation modifier, select the joint and go to Bone Constraints. Daz rigs also have several layers of hidden bones, which you can find in the bone collections. Now that we have imported our character into Blender, let me now show you how to apply a custom pose to it. Here in Daz, I have a fighting pose, and I want to import that onto my character in Blender. First, select it, and then go to File and Save As. Select Pose Preset, then create a new folder in your Genesis 8.1 folder and call it Poses. Then name your pose file and save it. In Blender, select your character's armature, then go to Daz Runtime. Go to the Posing drop down menu and select Import Pose. Find your saved pose file in the Poses folder. Now, there's a reason why I recommended turning on body morphs. If I import this without adjusting any settings, you will see that the hands haven't been posed. The reason for this is because when I posed this character in Daz, I used the Fist Pose slider, which was a body morph. So when you import a custom pose, make sure Effect Morphs is ticked. To see these morphs in action, go to the Morphs tab in Daz Runtime. If you open up Body Morphs, you will find all the values you set in Daz have been imported into Blender. You will be able to adjust any morph to suit your needs. When resetting the character, you will notice that the hands have not reset. That's because that pose is controlled by a morph. To reset those, go over to the Body Morphs tab, and click the X to clear the morph's values. Let's take a look at what makes Diffeomorphic such a useful tool, which are the character expression controls. These are found in the Facts and Facts Expressions menus. These will only appear if you have ticked them in the Import menu. Open Facts, Expressions. If you adjust one of these sliders, you will see that the character will start mimicking that emotion. You can also chain different emotions together. For example, we can make him shocked but happy, and also add some surprise. So, he looks like he's celebrating his birthday. If you want to make your own custom expressions, then use the Facts menu. This will give you control of your character's facial muscles, allowing you to go into even more detail. And this is why Diffeomorphic is such a useful tool, as you can create a custom character in Daz Studio, then import and pose that character in Blender while keeping all of Daz's functionality. Now, let me take you through what the other Daz morphs do. Starting with flexions, these are quite simple, as they allow you to make individual muscles flex. For example, here you can see I'm making this calf muscle become more tense. JCMs are basically quality of life improvements to your rig, 
They add in details which weight paint can't easily replicate. For example here, this JCM is simulating the shape of your elbow bone as your arm bends. Merge geographs will automatically merge any add-ons which have replaced mesh on your character. For example, this HD navel add-on will appear on top of the character's original navel if the geographs is not enabled. Daz Favorites is very useful if you have installed custom morphs which you want to use in Blender. For example here, I have installed Enhanced Facial Expressions HD for Genesis 9 and I want to use them in Blender. To do that, in Parameters, go up to the Settings menu and select Edit Mode. Then select all the morphs you want to use. Then right click, go to Favorites, add selected properties to Favorites. They will then appear in your character's Favorites tab. Now, when you have imported that character into Blender, if you go to the Custom Morphs tab, you will see a Favorites menu. These are all the morphs you have selected, which are now fully functional in Blender. If this menu is a little cluttered, then this is because Baked Corrections is adding extra morph options to it. You can turn that off if they're not adding anything useful. Daz Studio also has a little hidden feature called Power Pose. This feature is best used for a Genesis 9 character as it received limited support for Genesis 8. It can be accessed by right clicking on the sidebar, selecting Add Plane to Group, and then selecting Power Pose. In the Power Pose menu, go up and select the Face menu. In there, you'll be able to create a custom expression for your character. To import that expression into Blender, first, save your character as a pose preset. Make sure to label your saved pose as an expression. Also, your viewport will be saved as a thumbnail, so zoom in on your character's face before you save. Now in Blender, go into Runtime menu and then select Import Expressions. Select your saved expression file and import. Your custom expression will now appear on your character in Blender. PowerPose uses custom morphs with Genesis 9 characters. You won't be able to import an expression made with PowerPose without them. If you have posed the eyes using PowerPose, you will need to select their bones before you import. Then set the import options to affect bones, selected bones. Expressions made manually or purchased off the DAZ store won't need the PowerPose morphs to be ticked to import. If you have purchased a pose pack from the DAS store and you want to use that in Blender, follow these steps. Open DAS Studio and go to My DAS 3D Library. In there, click People and then click on the Genesis version which the pose pack uses. Click Poses, then click the pack's author's name. Finally, select the pose pack you want to use. Right click and select Browse Folder Locations. Copy that folder's URL. Then in Blender, go to Pose Import and paste that in. You can then pick a pose to import onto your character. You can also apply a partial pose by selecting half of the character's bones, then in the Pose Import menu, ticking Selected Bones only. I also recommend you bookmark the locations of your pose packs so you can reach them quickly. You can also import a Genesis 8 pose onto a Genesis 9 character. To do this, make sure Convert Poses is ticked, then select the Genesis version that the pose pack was designed for. This will give your character the most accurate pose possible, which is very useful if you already have a large library of Genesis 8 poses. Now to cap off this tutorial, I wanted to talk about Diffeomorphic's ongoing development and bug report forum. Diffeomorphic has a Bitbucket page where users can post about various issues for the developers to fix. Now please, bear in mind that this forum is for the unstable development version of Diffeomorphic only, not the version found on the homepage. That is the stable version. Please take some time and read the guidelines of this forum before you use it. If you do have an issue with Diffeomorphic, please follow these steps before you report it. Update your Blender to the latest version. Install the development version of Diffeomorphic. This is the version the devs want issues to be resolved on. If your issue is present on the development version, then you can post it on the forum. Include the error message and some screenshots. Follow these steps and your issue should be resolved. The Source tab will show you all the latest updates and fixes being added to Diffeomorphic. If you want to download the development version, 
go down to the Downloads tab and select Download Repository. Thanks for watching the full tutorial. Make sure you're subscribed for more Diffeomorphic and Blender content.